Success in Life, America's personal growth and achievement program. Featuring powerful testimonies of healing, financial miracles, and family restoration. Plus, interviews with people just like you who learned how to overcome the adversities of life. Presenting biblical success in life principles. Helping you find purpose and a plan for your life. Teaching you how to be everything God created you to be. Your host is Success in Life founder and president, Robert Tilton, a dynamic pastor author and international crusader for christ teaching people how to release their faith through god's word trained to activate god's power for those who need a miracle in their life also today pastor tilton has a special message addressing the lies and twisted allegations the media recently has launched please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Come on, people. Give me a little break. Come on, people. Give me $10,000. All preachers are bad, and some of them have made some serious mistakes. They'll do anything to make a buck, including lying or stepping on people. Send your checks to us. $10,000. They'll do anything to make $10,000. Federal agents are at your house and have a warrant. So what? Federal agents are at your house and have a warrant. Did God really say that? Federal agents seized Tilton's house in drug bust. The, 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 the audacity. We owe two hundred thousand dollars worth of back taxes. That's how we are. What are we doing? What are we doing with the money? Well, obviously we're spending it. And I'm making payments on the boat, and I'm making payments on the house. Tilton's house, not any mansion. Some people call them. They're not. Jesus makes nothing out of something. The audacity! Get that religious garbage out of your brain. Did God really say that? That's singing in tongues for you illiterate folks out there. Stop giving this organization. Go ahead. Let, Let the, the devil, devil use it. Please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again. Hallelujah. of the only in Dallas used bookstore's exclusive Christmas offer. We have countless Bibles owned by Reverend Bob himself. Remember, you can't squeeze blood from a turner, but you can twist a book to get money. Act now. Send unmarked cash only. Call 555 Contorted Ideals for our floating P.O. Box number. Void where prohibited by reason. Religious commentary has always been with us, but what about when it takes the form of satire? Are some subjects too sacred to poke fun at? Are there topics or personalities too revered for ridicule? For those in our audience who do not know our first guest, let me introduce you to Ole Anthony. Ole became prominent in Dallas a few years ago when his investigation virtually ended the television ministry of Robert Tilton. But there's another side to Ole. He's the leader of, of a small Christian community in East Dallas and the publisher of a religious satire publication, The Door, that is something of a cult favorite among seminary students. Our next guest, Chris Tucker, is also well known in the Metro as a television and radio commentator for KERA, a published author and a former columnist and editor of D Magazine. With his tongue planted firmly in cheek, Chris has also been known to take some sharp pokes at everyone from our politicians to, you might have already guessed it, Robert Tilton. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Why Robert Tilton? What, what, why did you go after Robert Tilton? <laughs> you spent quite a bit of time working you, on that one. You started one. it. Okay. <laughs> you started it. Oh, well, right. what, what, what we... Um, we, we did a, an investigation for Primetime Live mm -hmm. and, uh, and were sued more times than I can count over <laughs> it for it. But uh, we, were, we, we started looking, just pulling strings. And, and, of course, the thing that everybody remembers is we found the, the, the thousands of prayer requests that had been discarded uh, in the bank trash in Oklahoma. And that's what did him in. Well, what started you, one of the things that started your interest was your work with the homeless people, and you had met some who had right. become homeless. Right, and, and one in particular had, had given his last $5,000 back to Tilton and went to him for help. And uh, 
was turned away, told to go to a social this, service agency. This puts you right at the heart of why satire is a difficult and sometimes right. misunderstood thing. Right. I come at this, I guess, from a somewhat different vantage mm -hmm. point than Oli does. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, while I feel very sorry for all the people who gave their life savings and placed all that hope in Bob Tilton, to me he was always a comedian. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sort of hated to see him go. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry that he mm -hmm. built people. On mm -hmm. the other hand, uh, those people are there and they're going to... The they're bilkies are going to be found by the bilkers one way of the, the world other. like Bob Tilton. Mm -hmm. I just always saw him as an amazing showman, and mm -hmm. I can see how he probably pulls some people in that way. To me, he seems so blatantly phony from the start, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine ever placing one, one bit of belief in him. The Reverend Bob Tilton of Texas is more than just a passionate preacher of the Holy Word. He's a man of many robes. To some, he is a learned ethnologist. You don't have to be black to make a vow. It's absolutely amazing sometimes the whites that sit back when the blacks and the browns and some of the other folks get out there and they're believing God for miracles in their life. Sometimes I'm ashamed of how the whites draw back and use their intellect and miss the very blessings of God. I rebuke some whites right now. A competent medical practitioner. We're gonna hit arthritis today. If you got any form of arthritis, you need to call. We're gonna hit hernias today. We're gonna hit growths today. We're gonna hit problems with teeth today. Oh, a proud entrepreneur. And if I wanted to go out there and work in a secular job, believe me, I wouldn't be a pauper. I would be a multi-billionaire, okay? And a man of honesty. Satan gave me this mess. I mean, it's a lie of the devil. I shouldn't have said that. God gave me this message. But to most people, he's just plain folk. I'm John Bloom, and this has been God Stuff. But I tell you, I, I just love just to have a good old picnic with all of our partners. I mean, that's what I feel like. I'm actually feeling that. I like just sit down and eat some fried chicken with you and some corn on the cob and some real good rolls and some fresh pecan pie. You know, I just like to have a picnic with you and some enchiladas, too, and guacamole. We won't leave that out. For sure won't leave that out. We can't make it anymore without nachos. Robert Tilton called you a mealy mouth, drunkard, adulterer. True? That was the best thing he said about me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, these mealy mouth preachers, I know one in particular. That's not at all, not a minister at all, but an adulterer and a drunkard and a womanizer that's been caught in the clubs, having the audacity to touch a prophet of God. Do you want to listen to that garbage pumped out by the garbage press? Texas Attorney General Dan Morales has tonight given flamboyant preacher Bob Tilton an ultimatum. Morales tonight is demanding Tilton open the records of his television ministry to prove he's not defrauding any of his followers. Texas News 5 Chief Correspondent Mike Snyder joins us now from the newsroom. Mike, is Morales preparing to file charges against Tilton? Well, it's too early to tell that yet, Jane, but Assistant Attorney General Joe Cruz says this is a serious investigation. And this morning, we obtained a copy of a seven-page notice sent to Tilton ordering him to produce a lengthy list, as you can see, of tapes, documents, and records that should tell all about his ministry and his business dealings. Our pastor, Robert Tilton. Back in December, Bob Tilton took center stage at his Word of Faith Church in Dallas to defend himself against what he called malicious, unprovoked attacks by lying reporters and detractors. So that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Well, we have opened ourselves up, and we are not ashamed of what our books say. We're not ashamed of what we're doing. But that was before a paper recycling plant up in Tulsa found some 10,000 pounds of prayer request that Tilton tells his viewers he personally prays over. Attorney General Morales has now notified Tilton he has reason to believe that Word of Faith Family Church and World Outreach Center has engaged in trade practices and charitable solicitations which may violate provisions of state law including the Texas Consumer Protection and Deceptive Trade Practices Act. The Attorney General also says that he's got reason to believe that Tilton's activities violate state laws relating to the proper operation of charitable entities. 
like raising money for Haitian orphanages. But Jane, this afternoon, Tilton's Tulsa lawyer told me that the church gives lots of money to lots of charities, but does not do fundraisers on behalf of any single charity. Tilton's lawyer says state law doesn't apply to the church and says he will challenge the attorney general's right to those documents and tapes. Televangelist Robert Tilton has his face on billboards all over the Metroplex, but take a close look at this billboard near the eastbound lanes of I-30 at the Trinity River. Vandals painted horns and the satanic symbol 666 on Tilton's forehead. No one is claiming responsibility. Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Church plans to file a countersuit tomorrow against the state of Texas. Attorney General Dan Morales is suing Word of Faith for financial records the church refuses to show investigators. News for Texas reporter Sean Rabb says in the wake of the AG's action, only a handful of ministers will talk about what's at stake. The controversy over Word of Faith's financial records has renewed the battle between church and state, with both sides seeking a higher authority. I'm distressed that um, uh, the Attorney General can come in uh, and walk into a church, commandeer that church, say we're going into your records. Since shining in the network spotlight, Tilton's been investigated by Morales for possible deceptive trade practices. The church argues it does not sell or trade anything. And while dozens of ministers refused to comment today, others felt the message from the Attorney General is clear. I would hope that it would be a signal to all of us in churches that uh, we have to be accountable to our members, uh, we have to be accountable to the public, and that we will uh, operate our churches in a responsible manner in which uh, we would have no reason to uh, fear anybody looking at our books or uh, checking out how we do what we do. I don't think it has anything to do with a church. It has to do with someone that's claiming to be a church. Ole Anthony is the reason Tilton's been under investigation. He says the Attorney General's legal actions in no way threatens the church. I hope it says that you cannot commit commercial fraud in the name of God and expect to be protected by the First Amendment. Television evangelist Robert Tilton sued Texas Attorney General Dan Morales for two million dollars today, accusing Morales of bigotry and harassment. Channel H Robert Riggs is in our Austin bureau tonight with an update. Robert? Tracy, a federal judge issued a temporary restraining order this afternoon blocking an investigation into allegations that Tilton misused charitable money. The Attorney General was seeking records, including contributor lists, and had threatened to seize church assets if the documents were not produced. The investigation has been halted until a hearing in early March. Robert Tilton's lawsuit accuses the Attorney General of conducting a vicious news blitz to make it appear the televangelist was guilty of mail fraud. The suit claims that mail donations to Tilton's Word of Faith World Outreach Center Church have dropped by $2 million that 1,000 people have asked to be removed from the church mailing list and rolls, and that 7,500 fewer people have expressed positive interest in joining the church. We say that he's trying to violate the church's constitutional rights, freedom of religion, and we're trying to enjoin him from doing so. The lawsuit answers deceptive trade practice charges, saying that Tilton does not sell prayer and never asserted any person would receive a miracle in exchange for a contribution. Tilton's attorney says church membership has been falling off daily as the Attorney General has publicized the investigation. The Attorney General's office is not commenting until next month's hearing. This church is having a major attack by the Attorney General's office of Texas. If this can happen here, it can happen anywhere. They want our records. Well, Tilton, why don't you give them to them? Are you trying to hide something? If I was trying to hide something, we would not have opened our books up to the FBI and the postal authorities. The FBI is the, is the big guys. Texas State Attorney Generals is nothing but a, a flea compared to the authority of the FBI. So it's not like we're trying to hide something. They just don't like me some, some. Personally, I think it's political, and I think somebody's throwing some fuel on this little guy's fire. That's my personal opinion. If you want to quote me on that, you quote everything else. Doesn't make any difference whether I said it or didn't say it. Whether it's upside down, backwards or forwards, or whether it's spelt right or not, go ahead and quote it. 
TV evangelist Robert Tilton today declared victory in his battle with State Attorney General Dan Morales. Morales wants to take a look at the ministry's financial records, but a judge has temporarily blocked that action. Night Beat's Betty Smith reports. Tilton told followers at his Word of Faith church that our founding fathers' blood would boil if they heard what was going on. I believe that there would be some great founding fathers would turn over in their grave. I believe if they knew what was going on, the attacks against our Constitution and our amendment rights in this hour, I think some of them would come back from the dead. Tilton, who has filed a lawsuit against the Attorney General's office, says his church is protected from state inquiries under the First Amendment, but he claims he has nothing to hide. They don't know Pastor Tilton the way we know him. The man is a great man, and what they're doing to him is awful. I really think it should stop and just leave him alone. Let us practice our religion. All this time, people have been griping about separation of church and state. But then you've got this liberal Democrat, or whatever you want to call him, standing out there who's sticking his nose into the church affairs. I think it's a crock, and I don't think they had no right to do it. And, uh, you know, we have freedom of religion in, in America and freedom of speech, and, uh, and that's just the way it is. Churchgoers say they're tired of the controversy, and they'll support Tilton all the way to the Supreme Court. It's back to court next month. The judge has set a March 4th hearing to determine if Tilton must turn over the ministry's records requested by the Attorney General. Some new developments tonight in the legal tug-of-war between televangelist Robert Tilton and the state of Texas. Austin reporter Ken Capps joins us now live with the exclusive details. Ken? Well, Dale, this paperwork was filed very quietly in Austin today, and there are some big changes inside. What's Tilton trying to do? The Attorney General won't speculate, but we have some clues. Robert Tilton says he thinks the Attorney General is trying to destroy his church. The state wants to look over the financial records of Tilton's multi-million dollar ministry. Tilton says Attorney General Dan Morales doesn't have the right to do that. He says Morales' actions violate his First Amendment rights of freedom of religion. But in this newly filed court document, Tilton drops his civil charges against several key people in the fraud division of the AG's office and drops his $2 million damage claim against the state. Two weeks ago, he told his congregation he wanted Texas to pay for trying to discredit his church. The church, you are at least $2 million, and the clock is ticking every day until they shut their mouths and acknowledge that there's nothing wrong here. Attorneys for both sides are being tight-lipped on judges' orders. The sources inside the AG's office tell me they think this is legal maneuvering by Tilton to avoid having to give a deposition, to detail his claims he's losing millions of dollars and thousands of members, or to be helpful at all before his March 4th court date here in Austin. News 4 Texas has also learned Tilton was due to give a deposition in Dallas this morning and didn't show up. His wife is scheduled tomorrow she's not expected to talk either. Television evangelist Robert Tilton was ordered by a federal judge today to answer questions about his controversial ministry in Farmers Branch. Tilton failed to appear yesterday for a deposition to be taken by the Texas Attorney General's Consumer Protection Office. Channel H Robert Riggs reports the Attorney General wants to question Tilton about his fundraising practices. Televangelist Robert Tilton will have to do what he has fought so hard not to do. Answer questions under oath about the fundraising practices of the nation's fastest growing TV ministry. It appears Tilton's $2 million lawsuit against the Attorney General may have backfired. Tilton's attorneys had temporarily halted an investigation into whether Tilton's ministry used deceptive trade practices or violated charitable solicitation laws. But the lawsuit gave the Attorney General a legal opening to take a deposition about Tilton's lavish lifestyle and explain how prayer requests got trashed outside the Tulsa Bank where Tilton deposits donations. My experience as a prosecutor leads me to believe that when someone acts as though they have something to hide, uh, they may very well have something to hide. Uh, and I'm a little bit troubled by the degree of resistance uh, that we have met with so far in simply attempting to determine the facts. Tilton's lawyers say the Attorney General is trying their client in the media. They will tell Tilton not to answer questions during Saturday's deposition if the Attorney General asks about anything other than the sincerity of Tilton's religious beliefs or the harm to his ministry. Tilton leaves after the deposition on a crusade to India. We're 
have you guys been for the last 15 years? Oh, we were here waiting for you. <laughs> Robert Tilton jokes with some of the reporters he claims have cited against him recently. The televangelist met today with lawyers from the state attorney general's office. Hey guys, where y'all been? Television minister Robert Tilton was in front of the cameras again, but he was not in a pulpit. En route to a foreign crusade, he arranged his court-ordered meeting with state officials at DFW Airport. We talked about God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost and... After five hours behind closed doors, a confident, upbeat, smiling Robert Tilton emerged. He again charged the investigation is instead religious persecution. You guys, I want to tell you something. One of these days you're going to figure out that we've not done anything wrong. Uh -huh. One of these days, y'all are going to figure out that this whole thing, you guys have just been led by these folks saying stuff. The Attorney General's office would not confirm if Tilton discussed any financial details about his ministry. I can't really comment on the, the content of the deposition. It was fairly standard procedure for a lawsuit. It's not like we've tried to hide things from people. We opened our books up to the FBI and all the government authorities. But when someone abusively exerts their authority on us when they don't have that specific area of authority, we're not going to do it. Well, I'm happy with it. I didn't feel any really serious areas of problems. They believe what they believe. We believe what we believe, and we'll just find out in court. The next step in the case is a March 4th hearing to determine if Tilton must release church financial records requested by the state. I want to welcome all the television stations, the reporters, the newspapers, the radio channels. I w why don't you come here in person instead of sitting at home and watching it on your recorders? Why don't you come on here and get in the middle of these services? I, b I dare all of you reporters to get in the middle of these services because there's no telling what I'll be able to say today. Why, it could be quoted halfway around the world. There's no telling what I might si say today. And many of you, I know, are being paid to watch this program. Well, thank God that I'm here so you can have a job. Televangelist Robert Tilton will find out next week whether the courts will order him to release records that the Attorney General wants to take a look at. He answered investigators' questions for several hours yesterday. Tilton says the media is being misled by authorities, and today in his sermon he had this message. I'm talking to you in television land, you reporters, you television people, newspaper people, you attorneys. What is it if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul? TV preacher Robert Tilton has some connection in Tulsa you might find surprising. They include a convicted money launderer and a banker who's in trouble with federal regulators. We've been looking into some of the Tulsans who do work for the controversial evangelist, and you might be interested in what we found. Reporter Scott Gordon begins tonight with the, story of a, in, with the inside story of a Tulsa banker who's a key player in Tilton's Tulsa Connections. When Robert Tilton goes on TV, viewers go to their phones and give him money. The mail may be addressed to Tilton in Dallas, but it isn't open there. Instead, it comes in big mail bags to Tulsa and this bank. It turns out the man ultimately in charge of the operation is in trouble with government regulators. He is John A. Baker. He is the bank's board chairman and chief lending officer. Baker is named in this lawsuit filed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the government agency that regulates banks. The FDIC blames Baker for the collapse of another bank he headed for 12 years, American Bank of Muskogee. The bank lost more than $4 million when it went under in 1988. Regulators claim Baker and nine other executives drove the bank to failure by knowingly making bad, sometimes illegal loans. They include loans to so-called insiders, people with direct connections to the bank, and to others who were not making good on previous loans. One of the loans listed as improper is one to Baker himself. In written responses to the government suit, Baker denies doing anything wrong. What America needs is a revival of the so-called Christians to put God back into their finances. The FDIC lawsuit has to do with things that happened years ago and don't involve commercial bank. But they do involve the same banker, unsettled allegations of misconduct against the very man who is now responsible for counting and holding millions of dollars in evangelist donations. An ex-convict is now employed by a Tulsa company that does work for Robert Tilton and other televangelists. He's a former banker who got caught up in a government investigation into money laundering. Scott Gordon has spent weeks looking into all this to report our Oklahoma's News 8 Extra, Tilton's Tulsa Connections. This is Arlen Plender in his 1988 mugshot, not long before he reported to federal prison. 
He's a convicted felon and admitted money launderer. And now he's working for Response Media, the Tulsa company that prints and mails Tilton's letters. The company specializes in computerized mass mailing and does work for a number of corporations. But Tilton and other televangelists are some of their biggest customers. Plunder's troubles started when he was president of Limestone National Bank in Sand Springs. He was busted in a nationwide sting operation aimed at people who launder money. According to Plunder's indictment, here's what happened. Two undercover IRS agents came here to the bank he headed, posing as drug dealers with money to hide. Plunder agreed to launder it, hide it from the government, and for his work, kept some of the money for himself. In federal court in Tulsa, Plunder pleaded guilty to two money laundering charges. He said he thought the undercover agents were mobsters, not drug dealers, and cooperated only out of fear. Other charges were dropped in a plea bargain. At the time, prosecutors said Plunder was not set up. But the law is quite clear that if you give a person merely an opportunity to break the law and he has the criminal intent and seeks to ways to promote it for his own personal gain, for his own benefit, then entrapment is not the issue. It is greed. It is motive. We got these pictures of Plunder at a ribbon cutting for Response Media four years ago. Here he was with Jim Moore, the owner of Response Media. Moore hired him knowing of his arrest. In fact, at Plunder's sentencing, Moore testified on his behalf. Plunder was sentenced to three months behind bars, a relatively light sentence, even for white-collar crime. Plunder isn't the only person with a criminal background linked to Tilton. Primetime reported Tilton once got a $1.3 million loan with help from Howard Beebe, seen here on the left, a former Louisiana financier and ex-con. Beebe is linked in news reports to reputed New Orleans mob boss Carlos Marcelo. Ironically, the same sting operation that targeted Plunder in Tulsa also snared relatives of Marcelo in Louisiana. The devil likes to make something out of nothing. But Jesus makes nothing out of something. Hallelujah! Woo! Exactly what is Plunder doing for Tilton and other televangelists? In a hand-delivered letter to Oklahoma's News 8, Response Media's owner, Jim Moore, told us Plunder has no title, but said his work includes negotiation of financing and special projects. Moore describes Plunder as a valued employee, but adds he's not allowed to sign checks. Moore also writes, quoting now, Mr. Plunder, as well as his family, has paid the price for his past error. I, as a business owner, believe in our judicial system and believe that every person deserves a second chance. In fact, there are no allegations or evidence to suggest Plunder has engaged in any crimes other than the ones he pleaded guilty to four years ago. An Oklahoma woman is filing a lawsuit against evangelist Robert Tilton. She's a former follower who says Tilton is a fake. And the lawsuit asks for more than $80 million, claiming the evangelist is a fraud and he caused emotional distress. Beverly Crowley and her attorney announced the suit at a news conference this morning. She says Tilton keeps sending her husband letters, saying God talked to him about his troubles. Her husband died in September. Robert Tilton tells his TV viewers he can bring God's blessing down on them, the poor, the troubled, the sick. Beverly Crowley says with her husband Tom, he went too far. The couple lived in Winona, Oklahoma. Ill with diabetes and hoping for a miracle, Tom Crowley sent money to Tilton, and then Crowley died. But Beverly says months later, the evangelist letters kept coming, asking for money, Tilton saying, God spoke to me specifically about you, Tom. Tom, he wants to restore your health. When letters like this are going out to people that's been dead for this many months and God's told him to tell him such thing, it's lies. And people need to know it and they need to stop and they don't even need to listen to the man. The grieving widow sent Tilton a letter telling him to stop writing, that the letters were just causing her more hurt and pain. I love you and I look forward to you writing me. What the Crowleys didn't know is that Robert Tilton doesn't write any letters. They're generated by the tens of thousands from mailing lists by computer. The letters didn't stop, so Beverly is suing Tilton in federal court for $40 million for fraud and intentional emotional distress. The uniqueness here is that Robert Tilton is telling uh, uh, Tom, anyway, who's dead, that God's still talking to him about Tom Crowley. It just can't be. This is the first such lawsuit against the Dallas preacher. The woman's lawyer feels other Tilton next followers will soon join in. Church officials contacted had nothing to say. Tilton's Tulsa attorney couldn't be reached. Beverly Crowley says if she could talk personally with Robert Tilton, she'd ask him one thing. 
If God really does talk to him, then why didn't God tell him her husband was dead? The Texas Attorney General is still grappling with Tilton and his lawyer regarding handing over church records. Tilton continues to say he has done nothing wrong and that the investigators and journalists are doing the work of the devil. Looking more like a revival than a trial, hundreds of Robert Tilton followers flocked to the state capitol in support of the embattled televangelist. In a classic battle of state versus church, Tilton and his wife came to Austin today to explain why they won't turn over ministry records. News 4 Texas reporter Ken Capps is just back from the courtroom. Ken, what is going on? Robert Tilton has been inside the courtroom all day. His supporters have been right here behind me outside. They brought their band, they brought their Bibles, and they brought their faith. Faith, their preacher, is not taking their money. Robert Tilton's believers wrapped the courthouse in their religion and in red, white, and blue. Believing, like their pastor, the Attorney General has no right to see the financial books of the church, that it violates the First Amendment freedoms of the faithful. So we actually felt that this was something that went way beyond our church and went into the real, real heart of what America is all about. Marty Tilton testified as the preacher's wife and church administrator. We're honest people, Marty told Judge Sam Sparks. But the Attorney General still wants to see where the money is going. Suspicious many prayers are never seen by Bob Tilton, much of the money never going to church work. I think the church will support him all the way. We're here for uh, freedom of religion. Tilton is not one in court yet, but busloads of church members hailed him as victorious tonight. In testimony that at times sounded like a sermon, Tilton told a federal judge the attorney general is playing dirty with his church. But Tilton did admit he doesn't pray over every piece of paper that comes in. Sometimes he prays over a computer readout of requests. And, uh, not that we don't make mistakes, we don't think we have, but uh, we try real hard. Marty Tilton said the church brought in $65 million in 1991. Supporters believe the Tiltons are worth every penny. Because he's bold, he speaks out the word and he gets people saved. Tilton brought hundreds of supporters to the courthouse with him. They say they're fighting for religious freedom. Sonia Van Sickle has been covering the demonstrations out here. You just came from court. Can you give us an update on what Mr. Tilton says, the that was a humiliation that he suffered throughout this process? Well, Robert, just a few moments ago, Robert Tilton testified that he has been constantly harassed since the primetime live broadcast back in November. He says, quote, they yell at me from the golf course, they yell at me from the parking garage at the mall, their house has been paid papered with monopoly money. He says we live continually on guard. Now, as you possibly can see behind me, there's still a couple of hundred of uh, Robert Tilton's supporters outside this courthouse. Tilton's well-wishers have been peaceful, but very determined. They want to bring a strong show of support for their minister and their church. An estimated 400 to 500 people, at least nine chartered busloads of Robert Tilton's followers and supporters, arrived in Austin this morning. They gathered around the U.S. courthouse, filling up the front sidewalk and lawn. A 17-piece drum and fife corps kept the vigil outside, playing patriotic music and drum cadences as supporters waved flags. Students from Tilton's religious school were also here, one member calling this a field trip for the group. Followers who waited outside all day long to see the Tiltons finally got their wish. The Reverend addressed them and members of the media. I believe had a good day in court. As I've said before, I believe when the dust settles, all of you will know that we have committed no crimes. Even after eight hours of testimony by the Tiltons, this hearing is far from over. Seven others are expected to testify tomorrow. One of them is Ole Anthony. He's considered to be the thorn in Tilton's side. He's the man who went undercover to expose the Tilton ministry. Now, you saw the, the crush of Tilton followers in Austin, but not all of his fold stuck behind their shepherd after Primetime Live accused him of fraud. Today, we spoke with Roger North, a former church member, and he says ABC convinced him to get out. Yeah, but is that what God and Jesus Christ is all about? No, not at all. The opposite, you know. God and Jesus Christ are about giving money away, not making money. Roger North and his family left Tilton's flock after Primetime Live's expose on the Farmer's Branch preacher. The Norths played an active role in worship for the two months they were members. Roger even sang in the choir. But for the Norths, no church hymn could drown out the news of Primetime's report. It was emotionally upsetting, that, that show. And 
the very next day, and we were supposed to go, when my wife was supposed to go to a ladies' luncheon that they were having, and she said, take the tickets back. Rogers says one of the main problems he has with Tilton is his constant asking for money, which he thinks goes against Christian principles. God also wants us to, to give of what we have to, to others a lot more than he wants us to be prosperous for ourselves, and that's the message that, that Pastor Tilton is missing. TV evangelist Robert Tilton returned to federal court today trying to stop a consumer fraud investigation by the Texas Attorney General. And Channel 8's Robert Riggs joins us now live, live from our Austin newsroom with an update on the testimony in the second day of the hearing. Robert? Gloria Marty Tilton, the administrator of the 8,000-member Word of Faith Church in Farmers Branch, showed her first emotion in court today. The wife of the TV evangelist smiled as the ministry's chief critic was called a liar and forger. Good morning, everybody. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. TV evangelist Robert Tilton confronted his principal antagonist at the U.S. courthouse in Austin. Ole Anthony of Dallas, a self-appointed watchdog of TV ministries, testified that he found thousands of letters to Tilton in trash outside the ministry's banks. Anthony says he told the Texas Attorney General's consumer fraud investigators that the trash mail proved Tilton was not keeping promises, such as praying over prayer requests. Tilton's lawyer countered that Anthony consistently lies and accused him of forging the letters. Anthony traded charges with a Tilton supporter outside the court. Weren't they forged prayer requests? You gotta be That's kidding. No, I'm not kidding. It was brought out in the court today that they were forged. Prayer All right, the 400,000 pounds of forged prayer requests, that's ridiculous. Take a look at who your minister is. If he would pray over every one of the letters, he receives 10,000 a day. He'd have to be praying every 2.8 seconds. But it's not just one thing, it's a whole raft of things that he promises that he delivers on nothing. It's commercial fraud in God's name, and it's time that it stopped. When he's in 235 markets of the United States raising money on his infomercials, then it, it's the public's responsibility to look at it with a question just ask you though about this document that you forged and how do you respond to that well, of course i didn't forge a document that's crazy if you believe that go file charges well i bring you greetings from the land of india 800 million people strong and i'm sure you're wondering what happened to my suit get a full full length picture of this on tv this is called a Nehru suit. And all of the uh, executives, prime minister type of people in India wear an outfit like this. And I figured since the prime minister would wear one of these in India, I figured the prime time minister ought to wear one of these in India. couldn't resist the temptation. TV evangelist Robert Tilton and his lawyers are engaged in a battle they say will test the constitutional separation of church and state. But some would argue another problem in this case, the separation of church and school. Night Beats Richard Ray explains. It was 4 a.m. last Wednesday when 11 buses left for Austin. On board, supporters of Reverend Bob Tilton and his wife, Marty, including most of the high school students from Lexington Academy, the private school owned and operated by Word of Faith. Good morning, everybody. The Tiltons came to do battle with the Texas Attorney General over the release of financial records. The students, we were told, were part of a spontaneous outpouring of support. It's a voluntarily expression of religious freedom by all of the people, it's to show solidarity with our pastors, Bob and Marty Tilton. But when reporters attempted to ask members of the Drum and Fife Corps about the field trip, a school official quickly intervened. No question, let's line up, this is business. Now at least some of the students and their parents say they were less than enthusiastic about the trip, that all 8th through 12th graders were given a choice, go to Austin or stay behind and do five reports. Fearing retribution, the disgruntled students and their parents asked not to be identified. Lexington Academy also denied our repeated requests for interviews. But Superintendent Larry Lindsay did tell News 4 Texas over the phone that the choice was not five reports, but a five-hour project and one report. 
We worked it out. With every parent that called, we excused every student who had a note, said Dr. Lindsay. We were not arbitrarily coercing kids. When we were upstairs and the, the, the fife and drum corps were playing the songs, <laughs> it was hard not to cry. <laughs> you know, it was so beautiful. Even the parents who complained about the Austin trip were quick to point out that Lexington is a good school academically. But a majority of the upper grade students do not attend Word of Faith, and a few at least were not eager to be enlisted in the very public battle being waged by Pastor Tilton and his lawyers. The state is trying to force the Tiltons to turn over certain financial records for an investigation into possible marketing fraud. U.S. District Judge Sam Sparks has given both sides until tomorrow to submit more evidence. He's promised to rule sometime in the next two weeks. Okay, Rich, thank you very much. While they're coming, I want to show you my Bible. My Bible got wet yesterday, and so I had this brilliant, inspired idea. Put it in the microwave. New legal trouble tonight for Robert Tilton. The flamboyant Texas TV preacher has been hit with a second $40 million lawsuit by a widow in Oklahoma. More from Channel 8's Bill Brown in Tulsa. When you love somebody as much as I love my husband, and you put your sort of trust in somebody, and that's just like a slap in the face. TV evangelist Robert Tilton claims God talks to him, but some say the preacher goes too far when he says through him, the Lord can heal dead people. 67-year-old Dorothy Reese is the second widow in Oklahoma to brand Tilton a fraud and sue him, seeking millions. In the last stage of throat cancer, desperate with pain, Dorothy's husband Fred asked Tilton for a miracle prayer to save his life. The 70-year-old man died in January, but his widow is still getting letters from Tilton, suggesting that a cash payment will buy him life. Tilton gets the name wrong, saying in the form letters, Reese, God spoke a clear prophetic word to me for you. Reese, he wants to restore your health. It wouldn't hurt me as much if he walked up to me and hold on and hit me. And to get that letter saying that God was going to heal him. Because I'd already give him to God. We tried, but we couldn't reach Reverend Tilton or his lawyer to see what they think about the lawsuit. Tilton has often said he's done nothing wrong. He calls investigators and reporters covering him agents of the devil. Dorothy Reese's lawyer, Gary Richardson, says he may use the federal Racketeering and Influence by Corrupt Organizations Act to get at Tilton and take his wealth. Richardson told us eventually he thinks hundreds of people nationwide may sue the television preacher. And the widow was asked how she would deal with Robert Tilton. Well, I'll put it this way. Every snake I see, I kill it. Dozens of Texans who gave money to Robert Tilton also now want to sue him for fraud. We've learned that the first Texas suit is expected to be filed in Dallas next week. Robert Tilton has reason to rejoice today after a partial victory in an Austin court. But it was not a total win for the Word of Faith ministry. Attorney General Dan Morales will be able to look at some of the Reverend's records. Joining us live now from our Austin Bureau is Joe Cruz, head of the Attorney General's Consumer Fraud Division. He's playing a key part in the Tilt investigation. Mr. Cruz, thanks for joining us today. Sir. Does this ruling mean that your fraud investigation of Robert Tilton is essentially dead in the water? Absolutely not. The uh, uh, investigation uh, will continue. In fact, it now has new impetus because the federal judge has given us specific authority to go after specific financial records of the uh, ministry, and that's uh, basically what we've been looking for from the beginning of this investigation. Does this ruling today have any larger implication for other churches out there? Does it uh, somehow uh, put new restrictions on uh, what records the state can look at uh, at a church? This ruling with respect to uh, our ability to continue our investigation has uh, no impact at all and it's not any change uh, in the law. There, there were some other rulings made by the court that we intend to appeal to the Fifth Circuit. Uh, that we think uh, dramatically change some aspects of the law that limit our uh, investigatory authority under other consumer protection statutes. Okay, so despite the ruling today, uh, Texas Attorney General's office is going ahead with its fraud investigation of Robert Tilton. Full steam ahead. Cheering church workers and members hailed him as a conquering hero as Robert Tilton walked in, basking in the glow of victory. Amid reports of fraud and deception of television viewers, the Texas Attorney General has been digging into Tilton and the way he does things. The minister has battled back, refusing to turn over his records. 
Now, a federal judge has slapped down the AG's office and citing separation of church and state, sharply limited the records lawyers may have. All of it makes the Reverend a most happy man. It is a tremendous victory. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest victories in recent years for the First Amendment rights of freedom of religion for all of Two widows in Oklahoma are now suing Robert Tilton for $80 million, saying after their husbands died, Tilton still sent letters asking for cash, offering the healing of God. Clearly, Tilton did not want to talk about that. Uh, I'm not going to make any statement. Can I heal dead people? No. I'm not going to make any statements along those lines, but you'll see that that will be just basically squashed and thrown out toward that. We will be in. Do you have anything to say to those women? Yes, I, I love them and I'm praying for them. If you personally pray over every prayer request, why wouldn't prayer you prayer. know that the man had been dead for five months? If, you're, if your attention is so personal, isn't that something that a minister should know? I pray over the prayer request. You can't know everything, but God knows everything, and that's Amen. what's important. Once again, Tilton blasted the press as slanted and biased against him. He said he just presided over a revival in India with more than half a million people there and says no one reported on that or the other good things he does. The evangelist says now he'll press on, saving souls and spreading the gospel, and no lawsuit or investigation is going to stop him. March 19th, 1992. We have news now about some things that have happened as a result of our undercover investigation of televangelists. Here's the latest. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. Those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. After our report, the FBI, the Postal Service, and three Texas agencies, including the Attorney General, started looking into Robert Hilton. Well, this week, a federal judge ruled that the Texas Attorney General can indeed have access to church financial records to determine whether it really is a non-profit corporation. But the judge criticized Attorney General Dan Morales for making the accusations public. It was a great victory for us and for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At a news conference, Morales defended his actions and said he would appeal to get access to even more documents. I am not a tool of Satan. Uh, no one in this office uh, is operating at Satan's directive. Prime time will continue in a moment. Someone was talking about how Tilton writes all these letters, but they're not personal. Well, what about the Apostle Paul? Is this a farm letter? I mean, is this a... Is a the, the epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Ephesians, is that a farm letter? It's, been, it's probably been printed a, 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 a billion times. Here you go. Come on, reporters. You're looking for it. This farm letter has been sent out a, a billion times. And probably m hundreds of millions of people have read this as a farm letter to somebody else. But there's been millions more read it, and it wasn't for somebody else, that other billion, even though it had been printed the same way a billion times, all of a sudden it became one letter to that person. When I write you a letter, I'm writing hundreds of thousands of people, but at the same time, I'm writing you. Faith on trial. Faith on trial. That's the court case that's going on. And it's more than in the natural. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. Legal troubles continue to mount for TV evangelist Robert Tilton. In recent weeks, we've told you about two Oklahoma widows who are suing Tilton, charging fraud and emotional distress. Now their lawyer has come to the Metroplex looking for others who want to sue. News 4 Texas reporter Richard Ray says there's no shortage of interest. What we're going to try to do is, is, is make people get what we can. Gary Richardson is a former U.S. attorney from Tulsa, a much sought-after lawyer with a record for winning big, including the largest libel verdict in U.S. history. 
Now he's set his sights on Robert Tilton, what he says could be a class action involving hundreds of people. There are a lot of angry people, a lot of people that feel like that they have been lied to, that they've been defrauded. I, I've been involved in, in Christian work for years. My dad was a minister before he passed away. I've never seen anything like this in all of my life. Richardson has already sued on behalf of two widows whose husbands kept getting letters from Tilton after they died, letters saying, God wants to restore your health. Rose Rowney of DeSoto is another who feels victimized by Tilton mailings. They started when her son developed a heart problem and continued despite her written and telephone pleas to stop. And I said, my son died two months ago and I don't want anything to do with you. I said, you people have harassed me till I'm sick. Rose never gave the ministry money, but Pegeen Vega did. Eight or nine thousand dollars, she says, until hard times forced her to ask for help. On the phone, they were behind me a hundred percent. But when I showed up at their front door, they wanted nothing to do with me. Richardson believes he can prove commercial fraud in court, and if he does, the plaintiffs in the lawsuit could win everything Tilton has. This mission is far more than just about money, far more. We welcome all of you that are joining with us this beautiful Sunday morning right here at Word of Faith Family Church. And if I were you, because I know what's going to happen today, it, some of it, if I were you, I would not change that dial. Today is going to be a history-making service. It's going to be the most unusual service as far as I know, the kind of service that has never, ever happened before in the history of Christianity. And by the way, all of you reporters and media and press people, we're so glad you're in our services today by videotape. And I just pray that when you make your edits today, you'll always find the best views and shots and that you won't turn things around. And uh, frankly speaking, the more I get to know many of you that are reporters, many of you are, I've found to be just really great people working very, very hard to earn a living. So really, I, I don't have any problems with you, but I do like things put in the protect, correct uh, uh, sentence structure and to and to and to say the good things I want you to say. I've asked uh, our attorney uh, J.C. Joyce to be here with us today, and we have some things that uh, have uh, happened, and he does a better job explaining them legally, and I do a better job explaining them scripturally. Old Pharaoh just won't let God's people go. And he just keeps putting, making us want to make more brick without straw. And trying to make things tougher and harder on us to stay in the ministry to, to help more people and save more souls. So I've asked uh, Dr. Joyce, he is an attorney, he's a doctor, uh, to come here and to go through a little bit of a scenario of what's been happening here at our church and uh, what the Egyptians have been up to and uh, uh, <laughs> anyway we do have some very serious matters to deal with today and uh, uh, JC is going to go through them with you and uh, and then I'm going to come and I'm going to have some more things to share Thank you, so, Dr. Joyce the pulpit is yours and the press, the cameras, the media, I'm sure they're on the phone by now. <laughs> I'm just JC, and I'm honored to be here again today. I came before you a few weeks ago, and I talked to you about religious persecution. And I think that you have seen by now what I said was all but prophetic. You have seen the religious persecution of this church. You have seen it beyond anybody's comprehension. I want to cover Ole Anthony. <laughs> I hate bitching the man's name in the house of God. <laughs> but I'm going to show you, because this man's been the darling of the media, and the thousands of words that have been printed uttered out of his mouth, are appalling to me, 
And what I'm going to show you just easily and quickly, what a liar this person is. And I'm not prone to stand up and call a person a liar if I don't have the proof. I've got it out of his mouth. And the Bible says you'll be convicted out of your own mouths. And you'll remember this, and media, you'll remember this. They started off this yellow journalistic piece that Diane Sawyer's saying, we told this man we were me media consultants for this man, Ole Anthony, a Dallas minister, and that we wanted to set up a big time ministry like Robert Tilton's. That was a lie. Testified under oath that Diane Sawyer's ABC came to him and they wanted to do an investigative report of Robert Tilton and these other ministries. And that's why they were there, to do an investigative report, not to hire the man. And so you, everything there is a lie. When you start with a lie, it goes downhill. Another little lie, you'll remember that you've seen this man on television. He said, we were getting the stuff out of the dumpsters. Employees came by and they said, what are you doing? We said, oh, man, nothing, man, we're just getting cans. Well, that's just a lie. You know, lies just trip out of his mouth just like that. That man, every time he opens his mouth, tells a lie. And that man is a religious bigot. He doesn't believe in this religion. He has made it his goal for 12 years to attempt to destroy this church. He told this lie, and he made the lie so big that people believed it. He got all the governmental agencies together, led and orchestrated by the attorney general. And now he's got an attorney that's going to file civil suits against the church. And I say, he's got it. That man was on television release recently, and I looked, and sure enough, in the background there was Ole Anthony, and that was Ole Anthony's office, and that was Ole Anthony's garbage that was on the wall. And that man is also a bigot because he said he came to this church twice and it made him sick. Now, if that's not a bigoted statement, I don't care what the man believes, but to go into someone else's church and say that this religious service makes him sick is proof positive of bigotry. This church, Marty and I, our family, has been ridiculed, persecuted, bullied, muscled, by religious bigots. We've seen them consorting together, and we know that they have one agenda in mind, and that's to come of anything to save their face to say there's something wrong. So we have made a decision today. Actually, we made the decision Friday. We decided that we did not need the Texas Nonprofit Corporation. Listen closely. So what we did, we opened a brand new church that is not incorporated as a nonprofit corporation in the state of Texas, but is simply a legal, legal church. We are not under the authority of a Texas nonprofit corporation any longer because we are not, what is that, you say, Bob, does that mean we're t no longer tax, no, we're still tax exempt. You still get to write off your income taxes. We're still respected by the IRS. We're still under the authorities of, 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 of criminal authorities or the authorities of, of, uh, of the United States, like the FBI. We're not saying that we've done this so that, that we're not uh, under uh, any longer under uh, government authorities, but we're saying the Attorney General does not have jurisdiction over us as a church. Well, why did you sign up on that nonprofit corporation to begin with? Because we were just told to in those days. We didn't know it didn't buy us anything. And I'll tell you something, you pastors and parishioners of other churches, if you're incorporating the state of Texas, you better get rid of that thing, and you better get rid of it in a hurry. You say, it can't happen to me. You don't know when they're going to zero in on you and try to put the heavy hand. You don't know when Ole's going to get after you and decide he doesn't like you or lie about you or try to stir up lies about you. This is the News 8 Update. So at this particular moment, you, those of you that were members of Word of Faith, Inc., uh, you don't have a church anymore. That would like to... The embattled Word of Faith television ministry changes its name and its status. Pastor Robert Tilton says the ministry is no longer a nonprofit corporation. Tilton says he and his followers are going to cross the Red Sea to a place where his enemies cannot go. But as Chan Leet's Anita Venetti reports, the formation of the new Word of Faith Outreach Center Church won't protect Tilton from legal questions he still must answer. If there is any fixed star, I'm 
I'm sorry, but this is just so fundamentally wrong what's happened to this church. Word of Faith attorney J.C. Joyce gave a sometimes emotional summary of legal problems facing the ministry. The lesson in law preceded preacher Robert Tilton's announcement that he's taken legal steps of his own. That is, the Word of Faith nonprofit corporation is dissolved and the new Word of Faith Church is born. We gave all of the assets, all of the facilities, all of the legal liabilities, is that right? Yeah. We gave everything, now listen closely, press. Word of Faith, World Outreach Center, Church Incorporated, gave everything it owns, has, and owes to a new church. A spokesman for State Attorney General Dan Morales says the paperwork switch of assets won't make any difference in an ongoing fraud investigation. The Word of Faith must still turn over its records to the state by Tuesday. Assistant Attorney General Roseanne Reeser, who handled the recent federal district court hearing on the matter, says it's a move that doesn't surprise us. I don't see how it's going to change the document request we've made. Tilton and the church also face an $80 million lawsuit filed by two Oklahoma widows. Their attorney, Gary Richardson, in Beaumont for a trial, says the new church status won't protect the Tiltons from liability. As a lawyer, you become suspicious that uh, maybe they're trying to hide ass assets. Uh, I don't know what Tilton's attempting to do, but I can assure everyone that it will have absolutely no influence on us as far as us moving forward with what, we, what we're doing. Richardson says two more people from the Dallas area will join the lawsuit this week and predicts several hundred people will eventually take part. Robert Tilton maintains that Satan is to blame for baseless allegations against him and his church. So do not let the deceit and the trickery and the half-truths and lies as of others, saith God, stop you from trusting in me and trusting my word, saith the Lord of hosts. The minister says the change in his church's status is simply a way to keep the attorney general's office out of his business. But the state warns it won't be that easy. Anita Vanetti, Channel 8. Dallas TV evangelist Robert Tilton now faces a new criminal investigation.